Macy Grace Diddy was born on December 4, 2012 in the city of Cumberland, located in the state of North Carolina in the United States. Her parents, 22-year-old Janie Cassandra Diddy and 23-year-old Kevin Diddy, had met a few years earlier in the 5025th Military Intelligence Brigade when both were soldiers in the U.S. Army. Soon after they met, they started dating and subsequently started the relationship. Janie ended up getting pregnant and they decided to get married. However, shortly after their daughter Macy was born, Kevin was assigned to serve in another country. This distance strained Janie's relationship with Kevin and they ended up breaking up. Janie was given custody of Macy, and although Kevin was in another country, whenever he returned to North Carolina, he spent all his time with his daughter. According to Kevin's family, Macy was the joy of the family. She was a very affectionate, fun little girl who loved going to the park with her grandmother. Although Janie and Kevin had been separated for some time, the two were not yet legally divorced. In the beginning of the year 2015, Janie started a relationship with a man named Zachary Kiefer. Zachary was a 32-year-old paramedic working for the military, and like Kevin, that was where he met Janie. According to sources, the couple from the beginning had a very troubled relationship, with betrayals on both sides, and there were even clubs of aggression between them. But despite that, it didn't seem that little Macy was being affected by her mother's relationship. In the late afternoon of December 2, 2015, 911 received a call from the Village Lake apartment complex in Spring Lake. This was the complex where Macy lived with her mother and stepfather. On the call, Janie said that her two-year-old daughter was throwing up a lot and having trouble breathing. With that, a team of paramedics was sent to the family's apartment, and when they arrived at the scene, they provided first aid to Macy who was already unconscious. During the provision of first aid to the little girl, the paramedics noticed that there were numerous bruises on her body, and with that, they thought it best to request the presence of the police. As Macy was rushed to the hospital, police drove to the Village Lake apartment complex to investigate the situation. On the same day, police took the testimony of Janie and Zachary, Macy's mother and stepfather, to better understand what had happened to the little girl. According to the first version presented by the couple, on December 2nd, the three of them were at home and Janie left a little after breakfast to take Macy to an appointment with the pediatrician, as the girl had been having severe stomach pains for some time, and even though she was taking the medicine, it wasn't getting better. Soon after, Zachary would have left for work. Later, Janie came home with Macy, and moments later, the girl choked on some food and then started vomiting. Janie then called Zachary, as he was a paramedic and would know how to give the girl first aid. Still according to the couple's version, Zachary arrived in a few minutes and noticed that Macy looked stunned, was throwing up and clenching her jaw. In addition, her limbs had involuntary movements that indicated that her brain was lacking oxygen. Realizing how serious the situation was, the couple decided to call the emergency and while Zachary tried to help Macy, Janie went to make the call. Detectives found the whole story consistent, but it didn't explain the bruises on the little girl's body. Asked about it, Janie and Zachary claimed that Macy fell while she was feeling sick and that could have caused those bruises. The detectives obviously didn't believe this and began to suspect that the couple was hiding something. However, despite the mistrust, they still didn't have enough evidence that could prove the involvement of the two in what happened to the girl. And to get that evidence, they started to work together with the doctors who treated Macy. Macy Gray spent time at the UNC hospital in Shape Hill. The medical team that attended to her found that the wounds on her body were recent and had been caused in the last 24 hours. Later, due to her condition, which was very serious, she had to be transferred to another hospital, Cape Fear Valley Medical Center. Doctors did their best for Macy, but in addition to the bruises on her body, she also had numerous fractures, including in the head area that caused irreversible brain damage that left her in a coma. Little Macy was kept on life support until her father Kevin could come from another country where he was serving to see his daughter. 
As soon as Kevin arrived and gave her a hug, the doctors turned off the machines, as Macy no longer had any brain activity. Macy Grace passed away on December 4, 2015, just two weeks before her third birthday. Her funeral and burial was marked by a lot of sadness, especially by Kevin and his family, who had great suspicion that Janie and Zachary were directly to blame for what happened to her. This distrust was shared by the detectives and also by the doctors who treated Macy, but as I mentioned before, they still didn't have enough evidence to support the suspicions and they were working to obtain it. A month after her daughter's death, Janie hired a professional photographer to do a photo shoot at the cemetery where Macy was buried, right on top of her grave. And as if that wasn't strange enough, she even got in touch with Sonny Joe, a professional photo editor, and asked him to add images of Macy in angelic form to the photos she had taken at the cemetery. During the conversation between Janie and Sonny, Janie told the boy that she had lost her daughter unexpectedly due to an accident due to her choking on bananas and having suffered seizures. Sonny Joe was very moved by the story and decided to do the $500 service for free. After taking these photos and having them edited by Sonny Joe, Janie posted them on her social media, along with a description where she told the sad story of how she had lost her two-year-old daughter. Before long, thousands of people shared her post and she received countless messages of support and condolences for her loss. In March 2016, three months since little Macy's death, the report of the expertise carried out on the girl's body was released, and according to this report, what had happened to Macy was not an accident, but a crime. Still, according to this report, Macy had a contusion and bruises in the region of her head that were so serious that they ended up causing a cerebral hemorrhage, something that was the cause of her death. These injuries would have been caused 24 hours before she was rescued, and it was more than clear that they were not injuries from an accident, but rather that they were inflicted on her by someone else. With that report in hand, authorities now had the evidence they needed to charge Janie and Zachary for what had happened to little Macy. It was then that on March 23, 2016, police arrested Janie, 29 years old at the time, in her apartment. They also intended to arrest Zachary at the same location, however, he was not in the apartment and so the police issued a search alert for him. The searches didn't go for long, as a few hours later, Zachary voluntarily reported to the police department. Both Zachary and Janie were held at the Cumberland County Detention Center. After being confronted with all the evidence that the authorities had managed to gather in the recent months, both began to incriminate each other. Janie said that Zachary was very aggressive and that he had taken all of his anger and frustration out on Macy before they went to the pediatrician that day. Zachary, on the other hand, denied his accusation saying that he didn't lay a finger on the girl and that Janie was the one to blame for everything. Detectives continued to investigate the case to find out who was really telling the truth and shortly after, new evidence emerged. Among these proofs were text messages that Janie had sent to a friend saying that she couldn't take Macy's stomach ache anymore and that she had soiled the entire floor in the living room before she managed to get to the bathroom. Janie would have been so angry that she even hit her daughter because of it, something she confessed to her friend in those same messages. In addition to these messages, the police took a statement from the pediatrician who attended to Macy that morning. According to him, the girl was fine when she arrived at his office and didn't show any marks of aggression on her body or abnormal behavior. This indicated that the attacks would only have occurred after the treatment, probably when Janie had already arrived at her apartment with her daughter. Both Janie and Zachary remained in prison in the years that followed, until in 2019, after news forensic reports were ready, Zachary was released. This is because, according to these reports, Macy had been attacked 12 hours before she was rescued, which indicates that at the time of the crime, Zachary was not present as he was working, something that was confirmed by witnesses. Therefore, he had no direct participation in what happened to the little girl. In total, Zachary Kiefer spent 44 months in prison, and upon his release, all charges against him were dropped. Still in 2019, Janie Cassandra was released on bail, 
worth 25,000 and went on to answer for her crime in freedom. In March 2020 her trial began. However, this trial didn't have an outcome, since of the 12 jurors, 10 considered that there was enough evidence for her to be convicted. But two were not convinced and it was necessary that the decision of the jury was anonymous, with everyone agreeing so that a sentence could be imposed on her. Already in November 2021, Janie's lawyers filed a motion requesting that a plea agreement be made for her. A deal had already been offered to Janie years ago, but she had refused to accept it. In this new agreement, Janie would have to plead guilty to the crime and receive a maximum sentence of five and a half years. In February 2002, Janie participated in a hearing where she had to tell prosecutors and a judge whether she would accept the agreement or not. However, it is not known for sure as it was not released to the public, but something went wrong and there was no agreement. Currently, as far as is known, Janie continues to respond for the crime in freedom and her process still running in court. If, for whatever reason, she doesn't accept the deal, it is likely that she will go on trial, and if she is convicted, she could face a sentence much longer than five and a half years. Well, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching until the end, best wishes, and I see you next time.